What is happening, team? I hope you are having a fantastic day. Welcome to another episode of the Thrive Forever Fit Show. I'm your host, Jay Nixon. If you're watching on YouTube, I appreciate you. Go ahead and smash that subscribe and like button. Comment down below. Let me know what you think about the show. If you're listening on one of the audio platforms, iTunes, Spotify, Google, wherever it is you get your podcast entertainment, um, I appreciate you tuning in. And today I've got a needed episode for you. It was not my planned episode, but right now I feel like we need one thing over everything else in the world. And that one thing we need, that one thing we have to cultivate, that one thing that I am going to help you get more of today after listening to the show is hope. Right now, guys, we are overwhelmed with chaos, BS, nonsense, you name it. We are being run through the gauntlet, right? Adversity is at an all-time high. We're overwhelmed. We're anxious. Some of us are depressed. Some of us are losing our shit, for lack of a better term. Some of us don't know what to do, where to do it, how to do it, and we don't see any futuristic happiness ahead. And I'm here to tell you that that is not true. We are going to be okay. We are going to win regardless of anything that goes on. The presidential election, this pandemic, all the other stuff going on in the world and in your small ecosystem right now, my promise to you is that you will win. We will win. If you're part of my team, if you're part of this podcast, if you're part of my ecosystem, my promise to you is this, I will not rest until we win. I am going to be here regardless of what the world throws at us. And I'm going to be a lighthouse in the darkest moments for you. And I invite you to come along with me and help me shine our bright lights on the world so that we can make this world a better place. And so today's podcast, guys, is all about hope. Today's podcast, I'm going to give you seven things that you need to give up right now in order to increase happiness. And I think happiness and hope go hand in hand. I don't really think you can have one without the other. It's really hard to have hope without happiness. And if you have happiness, you've got a ton of hope. So what I'm going to give you today is I'm going to give you seven simple things. These aren't going to be mind-blowing to you. They may be refreshers for you that you haven't thought about. I'm going to give you a new way to look at things, a new perspective on how to see things. But in today's show, if you'll give up set these seven little minuscule things that you're doing on a daily basis, my guarantee to you is this. You will 10x your happiness and your hope will improve. Your hope will increase. You want to rock and roll? You want to do it? All right, guys, number one, today's going to be a heavy, today's more of a training. Today's more of a heavy note-taking day. So if you're driving, go ahead and list, keep listening, but go ahead and earmark. I never even knew what earmark means. Is that when you bend the corner of a page down? Earmark. I guess because it makes a little tiny little ear on the page. I digress. Never mind. Earmark this podcast, save it, go back, listen to it again when you've got some time to sit with a pen and paper. Maybe you just get your phone and you type in your little notes. But I want you to write down these seven things because I need you to come back to them on a daily basis until they've become part of who you are. Until so giving these things up becomes part of who you are on a daily basis. Because if you can remove these seven offenders from your life consistently and committedly, your life will improve, guys. Your happiness will go, will go up tenfold probably even 100x. Who doesn't want to be happier? I'm one of the happiest people I know. Guess what? I want to be happier. I think about these things all the time. I am just as guilty of these seven things from time to time as you are. There's nobody that's perfect. That's why these seven things are so imperative and so important that I bring them to the forefront, the top of mind for you, so that you can begin to eradicate them when they arise. Number one, guys, is simply this. We all do this, and it's such a silly thing. It's negative self-talk. How you speak and think about yourself matters. All you need to do is create simple, positive affirmations and reframes for when you begin to speak to yourself negatively. When you say, I can't do that. 
I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not this. I'm not that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. You've got to eradicate those thoughts from your brain immediately. And the best way to do that is with a positive, is with a positive affirmation. Write this affirmation down and then you create your own or you use this one. I am everything I need to be to create the life I desire. How powerful is that if you just simply think about those words? I am everything I need to be to create the life I desire. You don't need to be anything else. You may need to behave a little bit differently. You may need to act a little differently. You may need to think, talk, and speak a little differently, but you are everything you need. Guys, if, if other people treated you like you treat you, you'd have nothing to do with them. You would avoid them like the plague. So what I need you to do, number one, stop the negative self-talk. I need you to give yourself grace. Whenever you begin to think negatively about yourself, speak negatively about yourself, do negative actions towards yourself and to yourself, I need you to pause. I need you to give yourself grace. And I need you to say, listen, I am everything I need to be to create the life that I deserve and desire. Number two, and man, we are so, right now, guys, this one is at an all-time high. I have never seen number two in my 46 years. I've never seen it at this level. Number two is the judgment of yourself and of others. Judgment arises from unmet expectations. But the judgment of others right now and then quintessentially the judgment of ourselves right now is at an all-time high. We are in this weird, wacky world of judging everything with a negative lens. Guys, all judgment is, all you have to do is trade your expectations for appreciation and your judgment will go away. See, here's, what, here's why judgment arises. Is we want people to think like us, be like us, do like us, everything like us but that is an unrealistic expectation. If you go on social media right now, especially with the, the political landscape that is out there, it is nothing but judgment. It is nothing but you judging someone else for their belief and then them judging you back aggressively for your belief. So if you think about it, why can't you both just have your own beliefs without that judgment? Why do you have to be stupid? Why do they have to be stupid? Maybe we're both stupid. Maybe we're all stupid. Do you know what I mean? For getting so, and I'm not saying there's a problem with conviction about beliefs, but once you start, here's something I need you to write down. The moment you judge someone, you lose the ability to influence them. The moment you judge someone, you lose the ability to influence them. Meaning, let's use politics for an example. I'm probably the most apolitical person you know. I'm gonna vote for Lori for president. Do not tell her, she'll be pissed because she doesn't want the job, but I'm voting for Lori and her vice presidential candidate, Mike Honcho. So if Lori and Mike Honcho win, I created a movement. Right, because I know they'll get. I know they'll be somebody I can trust. But other than that, I can't. Why am I going to judge you for for believing what you want to believe? Right. So I have no problem with conviction. But once conviction becomes craziness, and you begin to judge the world and the people, and, and especially on social media, it makes no sense, guys. If you think about the social media fights that you get in. Hopefully you're not doing that or that people get into. Has anyone's mind ever been changed on social media? Have you, or if you're convicted about something and then you judge somebody else and you're like, that is so stupid. You are a dumb SOB, blah, blah, blah. Have they ever come back to you and said, hey, um, Betty, thank you for that. That brought a, a new sense of awareness to me. I did not realize how stupid I was and I would now like to retract my previous belief systems. And I would now like to engage with and adopt your belief systems. Thank you for that. Has that ever happened in the history of the world? Well, then let me ask you a question. If it has not, 
and it's a failing formula and all it does is piss you off and get you riled up and he said this and she said that and his but biden did this and trump said that and she did guys guys slow it down listen they're both a couple of numbskulls we're not getting the best version of who we have available to us in the united states you know why would you want the gig would you take the gig would you take a job that is predicated on judgment, on just being judged like a savage. Most of you, most of us couldn't handle it. We couldn't handle being judged every second of every day. And that's really all the president of the United States is. It's somebody for us to judge. Well, we would have, it's, we're, we're the, it's Monday morning quarterback and it's finest. Well, we would have done this differently. I don't know what I would have done. You know what I mean? Like my decisions on a daily basis are pretty small compared to the decisions that the president of the United States has to make from now throughout the, the, the beginning of time and throughout the end of time. So I, I don't know what I would have done. But, we, but most people said, so well, he should have done this. Well, he could have, really? I mean, how do you know that? You have a very limited amount of information that you're basing that judgment on. And really all it does is get you riled up. It gets you pissed off. It gets your cortisol level out of control. So just stop the judgment of yourself and of others, right? Go back to that place of grace. That will increase your happiness tenfold. You know why I'm as, you know why I'm as happy as I am? Because I don't get involved. I don't get involved in the political nonsense of yelling at other human beings for what they want to believe in. Because it's just a waste of time. It's a failing formula. And I'm wise enough to know if that's a failing formula, why not spend my time, my effort, my energy, my love, my compassion, my empathy on things that will make a difference in the world? Calling someone a nincompoop, way worse than that, is a waste of time. And all it does is it shows more about your character than it does about their character until they flash back at you with guns blazing, and then you both look like a couple of jack wagons. So get off the jack wagon train. Stop judging people. It's a way better way of life, guys. And it's really how we're going to all collectively get back to a place of hope, get back to a place of happiness. And isn't that where we really want? Isn't that really what we all want? If somebody just said, listen, guaranteed, if I'm president, I'm going to give you hope and I'm going to give you happiness, guaranteed. Everybody be like, shit, voting for that cat. Do not write me in. If you write me in, I don't want the gig. I don't want the job. I can't do it. You guys don't want me in there. I'm staring at my microphone like it's like it's staring back at me, like I just got crazy there for a second. You don't want me in there. Don't write me in. But you see what I'm saying. Let's move on. Number three, you've got to stop living in the past. Your life is not going that direction. We get the opportunity on a daily basis on a daily basis, the first thing I do every morning, guys, is I get up, I walk in the kitchen, and I get my little gratitude cards. I write the words, thank you, giant on the gratitude card on the outside. And I just say, I'm thank you. I'm so thankful for the opportunity of today. Today. Yesterday was amazing. But I've got to, I've got to focus my efforts on today. I can't live in the past. And whether you've been, whatever you've been through, Use that as purpose instead of pain. Use that as a drive instead of an anchor. Use that as a rocket ship to go to the next place you need to go to. But stop living in the past. Stop saying, well, it all, this always happens to me. Well, I've been through a lot. Well, this, guys, everyone has. Everyone. And yes, your pain may be more extensive than someone else's but it's relative to how you're using it as an anchor to hold yourself back. What if you used your pain and what if you used your past as a propeller to move forward instead of an anchor to look back? It's why the rearview mirror in the car is tiny and the windshield is giant because you're going forward. We've got to keep going forward. If you'll stop living in the past, it'll exponentially increase your happiness. Number four is this. You've got to stop overthinking and overanalyzing. I know so many people that get derailed in the details that they never get anything done. Here's the thing. Imperfect action 
trumps the perfect plan every time because there's no such thing as the perfect plan. What you need to do is take action, move forward and stop overanalyzing and overthinking. All that does is create more doubt, more uncertainty, more bad decisions because it keeps you stuck living in the past. Just take action, guys. Don't get derailed in the details. Imperfect action on a daily basis will increase your level of happiness way more exponentially than trying to craft the perfect plan at the perfect time. So stop waiting for your life and start living it. Don't think, well, after the election, I'm going to do this. Do it now. After Christmas, I'm going to do this. Do it now. After New Year's, I'm going to start again. How many times, how many, when are we going to, when are we going to blow up that rocket ship of New Year's resolutions? When are we just going to put a pin in it and say, listen, enough is enough, right? We can't keep walking down that road. Let today be New Year's. Let every day be New Year's for you. Every day is a new day. Every day is a new opportunity. Stop waiting for that perfect thing that's never going to come your way. Someday usually ends up being no day. Number five, you've got to drop your fear of change. Right now it's high, right? Right now it's exponential because you're terrified of the election one way or the other. I don't know where you're going. I don't know who you're voting for. I don't give a shit. But your fear of change right now is so exacerbated that it is, it is putting you in cement. You are terrified. Here's the truth. Nothing in life ever stays the same. Nothing. Change is inevitable. Fear of change is an irrational fear because fear in and of itself, I mean, change in and of itself is, it's gonna happen, it's inevitable. We are nothing but energy. The world is nothing but energy. And you can't stop energy. Energy is constantly moving. It's constantly shifting. It's constantly adjusting. You've got to adjust with it. You've got to be adaptable. You've got to improvise. You've got to shift. You've got to pivot. But stop being afraid of change, guys. It's going to change. I promise you it's going to change. And if you'll increase your level of happiness, those changes won't have that much of an impact on you. Because you're going to stop overthinking. You're going to stop living in the past. You're going to stop judging people. You're going to stop judging yourself and talking about yourself like a piece of crap. And then change won't be so scary. Change will actually be fun. Number six, you've got to stop acting like somebody you're not. You don't need, listen to me when I say this, you don't need to be anybody other than who you are. Today, we have this, it's, it's nonsensical, the world we're living in right now of reality TV and, and social media and gurus and hurus and every, this fake persona, that this highlight reel that we're living in. Don't get caught up in it. You don't need to be anything or anybody other than who you are, who you were born to be. Don't get caught up in the false reality. Don't get caught up in somebody else's BS, somebody else's movie that they're trying to create. Don't get caught up in it. Take your mask off and be you. And again, fear of change, guys. If that's you, if you're living right now as somebody you're not, you're a little bit fearful of that, let me let you in on a little secret. You're being judged right now. Remember what I said earlier, you have to stop the judgment of yourself and others. We're some judgy jokers but you got to stop being that judgy joker. And once you start judging, once you stop judging people, you stop having a fear of being judged. It's a, it's a magical formula. Once you stop judging other people, you lose your fear of being judged. You see how those two things just work in unison? They're perfectly synergistic. How amazing is that? So you just got to, you just got two for one. You just exponentially increase your happiness by stopping, by not judging other people, because then you don't give a shit if somebody judges you. It's amazing. You're welcome. Number seven, last one. Stop trying to please everybody. So many of you, so many of us, I did this for a long time. I don't do it anymore. You're trying to live a life based on somebody else's design. All you need to do is be you, be the best version of you that you can possibly be. 
because this is an impossible outcome, trying to please everyone, trying to live a life that makes everyone else happy. Let me, let, let, let's, I know we're going to agree on this. Most people that you're living for aren't happy with their own lives. How on earth are they ever going to be happy with your life? How are they on earth ever going to be happy with your decisions, right? So you have to stop worrying about your decisions making someone else happy because they're not happy with their own decisions. See, happy people, because everything I've told you today, the happiest people I know don't do these things. Now, again, we're all human. We all fall into that thing. We're like, for a minute, you kind of judge. You're like, okay, stop. Don't, why, what am I doing? Why am I judging that person? They have the right, they have the right to think that way. I may think it's stupid, but I don't need to judge them for it. I don't need to publicly blast them for it. I don't need to post anything on social media. I just need to move on with my life, right? You can think shit's stupid. You can think people are making bad decisions, but what's the point in judging them for it, right? Because I guarantee on the flip side, they think you're making bad decisions. So you see how it's just full circle, right? Everything we do, the negative self-talk, the judgment, living in the past, overthinking, fear of change, acting like someone we're not, trying to please everyone. Can you see how when you put all those in a pot, it makes just a, a bowl of shit soup? Sorry for that, that visual, but it just makes a bowl of shit soup. And no wonder we're not as happy as we could be. No wonder we're not living with a bunch of hope and a bunch of abundance and a bunch of awesomeness. I will promise you one thing. I don't give a Fred Flintstone blank who wins the election. And I'll tell you why. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to win. I'm going to figure out a way to win. Regardless, I always have and I always will. And that's good news for you because there's nothing special about me. If I can do it, you can do it right? We will find a way to win. We'll find a way to create the life that you deserve and desire to live. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm not even waiting. I don't give a shit. I probably won't even know who wins until somebody comes and tells me. Like, I'm not going to be glued to my computer, my phone, my whatever, because my life's going to stay the same. You know why? Because I improvise, I overcome, I adapt. I focus on these seven principles of removal so that I can be as happy as I can be. I'm not gonna judge the decision. I'm not gonna walk around boo-hooing. I'm not gonna walk around talking about how my life's never gonna be the same and it's gonna be this. I will figure it out. I'll, 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 granular, I'll granularize, okay, it's a tough word to say. All my decisions, I'll control my ecosystem and I'll figure out the moves that I need to make predicated on the decisions that have been made out there in the world and the universe. That's what we all have to do on a daily basis if you think about it. Life is about shifting and adapting to get back into alignment. Adversities and challenges always try to push us out of alignment. It's our job to be aware, self-awareness, move back into that place of alignment so that we can live in extreme happiness, so that we can live in extreme hope, so that we can have extreme abundance. Guys, these are choices. Everything I told you today, these seven things are decisions. They're choices that you have 100% control over. That's amazing. You just got a formula that you're 100% in control of that can exponentially increase your happiness, which is going to transcend into increasing your hope, which is going to give you a brighter future full of abundance and awesomeness. Holy shit. That's unbelievable. That's unreal. And you're welcome. I don't want to keep this to myself. I don't want to be the only happy guy walking around. I don't want to be the only guy thinking that, that we got something to be hopeful for. I'm telling you, we're going to win. If you're part of my community, if you have any connection with me at all, and you're listening to this, you do. We're winning. Promise you. If you're not already a part of my Wellness Lab Launchpad, guys, Facebook group, free Facebook group. No strings attached, no nothing. Wellness Lab Launchpad. This is it, man. I'm going to win. I'm going to win in there. Everybody in that group's going to win. I will see to it. I'll put you on my back like a Sherpa, and I will walk you up the hill. That's a promise. 
Go there now, Wellness Lab Launchpad, join it up. Guys, share this podcast. Tell your friend. People need to hear this, man. There's enough nonsense going on. We don't need one more. We don't need one more statistic on the pandemic. We don't need one more debate. We don't need one more. He said, she said, so and so's computer, so and so's a liar. So we don't need one more ounce of that. All we need is a little bit of hope. And I'm telling you, I got it. I hope you've got it. If you don't have it, I believe in the power of proximity. Get yourself as close to me as you can to other people that have this same belief system and feed off of that energy. Feed off of that that belief system that we're going to be okay because success leaves clues. Happiness is a choice. These seven things I gave you today are choices, decisions. Please start making them because I need you on the team. I need you on the bus. I need happiness on the bus, guys. Let's increase our hope. Let's don't give up. Let's believe that there's going to be a better way. There's going to be a better future for all of us. I promise you that. I believe that. 100% conviction. Guys, thanks for listening. As always, share this podcast. Like it. Love it. Subscribe. Download it. Do all the things. Listen to it again. Make sure you're, you're removing these seven adversity building obstacles from your life. And I guarantee you, your happiness is going to exponentially increase. Love you. You know that. All right. We're going to talk again soon. See you.